Hello there, my name's Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. Now, Google has just announced three new Pixel devices, a smartphone, a foldable, and a tablet. So we're talking about the Pixel 7a, we're talking about the Pixel Fold, it's got a foldable screen on it and a screen on the outside so you don't have to unfold it when you just want to quickly answer a call or take a photo. And we're talking about the Pixel Tablet. And the interesting thing is they're all using exactly the same processor, a processor that has been designed by Google. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So we're talking about the Pixel 7a, so that's the a series version of the Pixel 7, and it's got some differences. It's slightly cheaper, and we'll dive into those in a minute. We've got the foldable, the Google Fold, and we've got the Pixel Tablet. And of course, Google revolutionized the tablet market way back in the day, 10 years ago now, when it released the uh, Nexus 7. I had a Nexus 7, it was fantastic. Of course, back then, smartphones had smaller displays, so having that seven inch tablet was fantastic. They've tried several times after that, Nexus 9, Nexus 10, various things to do with slates and chrome os and they've tried to kind of reproduce the success and they've not succeeded maybe they will do with this we'll dive into the details uh, in a minute but the interesting thing is they're all using the google tensor g2 processor now the google g2 tensor processor is not something uh, new we've seen it before it's been in other devices and as well as the the g1 the first generation of it and it's really interesting because Google are not trying to play the specs game. They're not saying we're bringing you the fastest CPU, the fastest GPU. What they're saying is this is good enough for the user experience. This is going to be what you need because we're mainly focusing, says Google, on the uh, machine learning aspect, the NPU, the neural processing unit. And so this has really got an two Cortex X1 cores. Now, the Cortex X1 cores were announced in 2020. And we saw them being used through 2021 and they're still being used now by Google, even though we've had the Cortex X2 and the Cortex X3 since then. And there's Cortex uh, two Cortex A78 cores, four Cortex A55 cores, and then a Mali G710 GPU. So they're not, it's not, this is not rubbish stuff, this is good stuff, but this is not the bleeding edge. And Google is saying, not a problem, we're concentrating on what we're doing with the machine learning. The user experience will be just as good with what you're getting here, plus the machine. And when they talk about the machine learning, they talk about all the stuff they can do on the device itself without going up to the cloud, all the stuff they can do with the camera, object removal, and loads of other stuff like that. It's available kind of locally on the actual device. So is this a bold move by Google to release three new devices all using a relatively old processor? Or actually, is this the best thing? Because actually they're more concentrated on the user experience. And that's what we want as consumers to have that user experience. Really, you and I are the only people that can decide when we actually part with our money, if that's what we actually want. Okay, so what we do is have a look at all three devices, quick look at their specs, quick look at what they are, uh, and so that you know what Google has released. Okay, so let's start with what's common between these three devices, the Google Tensor G2 Generation 2, the brains behind it all. Okay, there's just an obligatory shot of a square slab with a G2 in it. That's meant to be, of course, the processor. It's the next gen processor custom built for Pixel. Of course, when they say next gen, they mean compared to the previous gen, the G1 that we had before that. Um, and it's the same chip that's in the Pixel 7 and the Pixel 7 Pro. So we have seen it before, as I mentioned a moment ago. And it powers Google's advanced machine learning, speech recognition, Google's AI for improved audio on phone calls and so on, plus all that photo video magic like Magic Eraser and Photo Unblur. So it's aiming at this uh, machine learning stuff to give you that consumer experience, not necessarily the greatest performance or the highest specs. You also, of course, get five years of security updates and that's true across all of the Pixel range, including the tablets and the, and the Fold and the Pixel 7a. And so that is a big selling point. Of course, if you buy something now, you know you're not going to be left out uh, in the dry without any updates. So let's look at the Pixel 7a engineered by Google. So let's start with the display. It's a 6.1 inch display that has a refresh rate 
up to 90 hertz and we'll talk more about that in a minute uh, 20 by 9 aspect ratio full hd plus that means it's 1080p down one side but it's greater than 1920 it's 2400 it's an oled display at 429 pixels per inch comes with corning gorilla glass to cover the glass got hdr support and full 24 bit depth for 16 million colors when we look at the battery ram and storage we have typical battery sizes 4385 milliamp hours 18 watt fast charging and there is now qi certified wireless charging you get eight gigabytes of ram and 120 gigabytes of ufs 3.1 storage and that eight gigabytes of ram is certainly good and maybe google finally recognizing that in the past some of the pixel phones didn't quite have enough ram in them when it comes to the cameras of course very important for uh, our daily uh, usage the camera that you have in your pocket is the best one and so we've got a rear camera 64 megapixels uh, using the sony imx 787 sensor it's got super resolution up to 8x there's also a 13 megapixel ultra wide uh, camera and on the front you've got a 13 megapixel which is fixed focus going on to video what can those cameras do well 4k at 30 or 60 fps you can get out of the back of course you can also do 1080p out the front 4k at 30 fps so 4k all around that's pretty good news now compared to the Pixel 6a, it's got two more gigabytes of RAM, so that in itself is certainly a good reason to pick it over the previous generation. It's got the G2 rather than the previous G or G1 processor, and you've got that 90 hertz display up from the 60 hertz display. So those three things in themselves are pretty good reasons uh, to upgrade from the 6a to the 7a. You've also got wireless charging thrown in there as well, but as is often the case nowadays, no charger of any kind uh, wireless or otherwise is included in the box and of course it has those better cameras that we just mentioned now compared to the pixel 7 this is quite interesting because the 7a is cheaper now it does have a slightly smaller display the charging isn't as fast it's 18 watts rather than uh, the higher charging speed that you can get on the pixel 7 uh, and the cameras are very similar but the 7a does have more camera features so where will it be available us canada uk ireland germany france spain italy norway netherlands denmark sweden japan australia singapore taiwan and india starting from 499 dollars and the roughly equivalent prices listed there at the bottom of the screen Okay, so now on to the Pixel Fold, the new form factor from Google. Not new in the fact we know we've had it before, but new from Google. The first foldable phone engineered by Google. And there it is. As you can see, folds in the middle there, so a foldable screen. So there are two screens. There's the external screen, which you can use when the phone is closed. It's a 5.8 inch display, 17.4 by 9 aspect ratio, greater than full HD. So it's 2092 by 1080 again an, an OLED display up to 120 hertz refresh rate so that's very very good for that external display there and again Corning Gorilla Glass and it's quite bright up to 1200 nits in HDR mode up to 1550 nits for its peak brightness and again that 24 bit depth for 16 million colors now on the inside when you open up the phone you've got this much much bigger display so it's a 7.6 inch display 6 by 5 ratio 2208 by 1804 again OLED 308 pixels per inch up to 120 hertz uh, refresh rate on that as well ultra thin glass with protective plastic layer up to a thousand nits 1450 nits peak brightness 24 bit color depth again for 16 million colors Okay, so let's move on to battery, RAM, and storage. Uh, typical size is 4,821 milliamp hours. Fast charging with up to 30 watts USB-C, including PPS. It's a Qi certified wireless charging. 12 gigabytes of RAM, and you have 256 or 512 gigabytes of UFS 3.1 storage. Now, when it comes to the cameras, there are just so many cameras. Try to get this right. So on the rear, you've got a 48 megapixel camera. You've got a 10.8 megapixel ultra wide camera and you've got a 10.8 megapixel telephoto camera and then they can record video up to 4k at 60 frames per second then on the front you've got a 9.5 
uh, megapixel camera, which is fixed focus. That can also do 4K at 60 frames a second. And then you've got the inner camera. So the front camera is like on a traditional phone, but then when you open up, you also still got a camera there, and that's an eight megapixel camera, fixed focus, which can record at 1080p. Maybe if you're doing a Zoom meeting or some kind of video conferencing meeting, that's when you would use that one. So a little bit of information here about the how you can unlock the phone. There is a fingerprint unlock with the power button fingerprint sensor. So it's not under screen fingerprint sensor. And there's also face unlock comes with the Google Fold. And it starts at $1,799. Okay, so moving on finally to the Pixel tablet. Helpful in your hand and at home. Now, as I said in the intro, Google have had a lot of success with the Nexus 7 way back when, 10 or so years ago, but they haven't really followed that up with their subsequent uh, tablets. Now, this may be the solution. What they're doing here is you place it on the charging dock stroke speaker which means that you can charge it and you get great sounding music and for video streaming. So you can kind of turn it into a home assistant or on a dock, which charges it and gives you a speaker. And then you take it off that dock and you can use it as a tablet. So here they show you the picture. So this actually might be a good selling point. It's more than just a tablet. So the Pixel tablet charging speaker keeps your tablet charged 24 seven. It doubles as a speaker. And here's the thing, the dock is included with the tablet. So you're, it's not like, and you could buy this if you want to, if you want to pay more money. This is the combo they're offering you, this kind of hub docked, tablet that you can also just take away and sit down on your sofa and use it as a uh, as a tablet you can purchase additional docks to enable hub mode in multiple rooms throughout your home that sounds quite of an interesting idea now so we mentioned the software there's more than 50 google optimized apps for the uh, Pixel tablet to take uh, benefit of that bigger screen uh, you can run multiple apps simultaneously with split screen and uh, popular apps like Spotify, Minecraft, Disney Plus have also been optimized for the Pixel tablet. So Google have been working hard here to make sure the experience you get when using the tablet is actually going to be good out of the box, not something we have to wait six to 12 months for everybody else to catch up. This is actually a good work by Google at this uh, point. So the idea is to make this a good experience, which is what they definitely need to make it if they want to take on, well, frankly, if they want to take on the iPad, really. So what about the specs? Well, of course, you've got the G2 processor, which we've already mentioned, 10.95, almost 11 inch LCD display, not an OLED display, 2560 by 1600, supports USI 2.0, starts that's the universal stylus initiative, so you can get a stylus from any manufacturer that supports that uh, specification and it will work. So that's going to be interesting to see how people uh, use a stylus. So this is something we've also seen with some Chromebooks that support this as well. And there's eight gigabytes of LPDDR5 RAM. It would have been nice if it was 12, like the Fold. That would, of course, have increased the price, but eight gigabytes is good. We'll see how that fares with the multitasking stuff once people start to use this uh, seriously. Then we've got 128 gigabytes or 256 gigabytes of internal storage. 1080p video recording at 30 FPS for both cameras, the front camera and the rear camera. And there's fingerprint unlock with the power button fingerprint sensor sensor, not under screen like the Pixel 7a, but similar to the Google Pixel Fold. So what about the price? Well, the Pixel tablet starts at $499. That's £599 in the UK, which includes that bundle dock. So that's the key thing. Although that seems to be me to be quite a high price, uh, you do get that bundle dock included. So that maybe that makes that a bit sweeter. The tablet will be available in Hazel, Portslin, and in the USA in Rose. Now, if you want any more information about these devices, do head over to androidauthority.com. For example, there's already a review of the uh, Pixel 7a up on the site because uh, the team there got a review unit a couple of weeks ago and they've been working on that and they've been able to publish that straight away. And the same information about the Fold and about the tablet, androidauthority.com. Okay, that's it. So there you go, those three new devices from Google. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below to tell me what you think about these devices, what you think about the price, what you think about their availability, what you think about the fact that it's using the Google G2 processor. Love to hear your thoughts. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like this kind of videos, then I invite you to stick around, join the community by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.